Hi there, I'm glad to welcome you to my channel, World of Stories. I have a lot of interesting life stories that I want to share with you. Enjoy listening. Now, Maria, tell me what the subject and the predicate are in this sentence. Come on, you're smart, you can do it, Amanda gently asked the girl, who had been sitting on a chair for half an hour of tutoring time and couldn't show any success. The post-lunch sun painted shining, slanted squares on the floor and wall of the kitchen. In the yard, it was the height of that wonderful pair, when you can forget about the existence of other seasons. The girl was distracted, tired. However, with such a stepfather, it's not surprising that the child was nervous all day. It's kind of stuffy. I'll open the window, Amanda said, getting up and walking to the window. In general, in this one-room apartment, where she had been working as a tutor for three years, helping her best friend's daughter with Spanish, it was always stuffy, dirty, and gloomy. Since Maria Nicole's mother fell ill with a disease against which doctors just shrugged their shoulders. They said, find money, find someone who will take care of it. And even better, accept it. The case is hopeless. The house became very bad because of this. Amanda and Nicole became friends by chance. They both somehow came to the skating rink in winter, not knowing what to do there, and went out onto the ice laughing, holding hands, and fell more than once. Then, warming up with coffee and pastries at a small kiosk right by the rink, they started talking and found out that they had a lot in common. They were both fans of old jazz, hated onions in any dish, were early birds, and even, it turns out, lived in neighboring yards. But there were, of course, significant differences between them. Amanda was three years older than her new 18-year-old friend. Amanda came from a full, one might say, intellectual family, with a mother who was a math teacher, a grandmother who was a school deputy principal, and a father who was a professor of art history at the university. Nicole stepped into adult life from an orphanage and had just received an apartment. Sometimes Nicole felt incredibly lonely because some people treated her with offensive, insulting motives because of her background. Unfortunately, such people were even found in Amanda's family, but she stood up for her friend and declared that she had had enough of giving in to her relatives and agreed to enroll in the philological faculty, dedicate her life to the Spanish language, and give up her dream of becoming a dog handler. That's how Amanda finally defended her right to friendship. By the way, she also supported Nicole in her decision to become a seamstress. A job, she said, would always be there. The girls didn't keep any secrets from each other. Except for one, gloomy, literally crossing out Nicole's life before and after. Then, nine years ago, Robin happened in her life, deafening, exciting, as only possible for first love. He was brave, strong, daring. Absolutely not suitable for Nicole in the opinion of her best friend. Sorry, but he's not right for you, Amanda said straight out that fateful evening when Nicole was spinning in front of the mirror, fixing her hair and evaluating how good she looked in a little black dress, a thread of artificial pearls around her neck. He loves me, and I love him, she replied, and Amanda rolled her eyes because that was not an argument for building serious relationships at all. Her friend repeated like a spell. He's a bad person. Yes, from a wealthy family, but that's just a facade. And what is he really like? Do you know what people say about him? Nicole just shrugged. She smiled like a fool, kissed her best friend on the cheek, chirping. Goodbye. Wish me luck. Today he'll probably propose to me. And she ran off to the date that destroyed her, because the next morning Amanda, as the closest contact, received a call from the hospital. Nicole was in intensive care with serious injuries, the doctor explained to Amanda that her friend had been beaten and thrown out of a moving car. Serious injuries affected her entire body. And the worst thing was, especially affected her spine. They said she should prepare for the worst, that she would become disabled. But Nicole quickly, somehow amazingly quickly, began to recover. But they didn't find the assailant. He managed to leave, literally fled the country. And then it turned out that Nicole was pregnant. And the doctors unanimously said, you should have had an abortion. Pregnancy against the background of injuries can lead to catastrophic consequences. This is my child, Nicole replied when Amanda, along with the doctors, came to convince her of the need to choose herself, her healthy future. 
It's a girl, I feel it, and she's mine, do you hear me? I'm her mother, and everything will be fine. And then, after asking to be left alone with her friend, Nicole forced Amanda to swear that no one would ever know the truth about who the father of the child was. That this monster, which had treated her like this, throwing her out of his life when she was no longer needed, when they were done playing at love. When Nicole was discharged from the hospital, at first it seemed that life was slowly but surely returning to its former course. Friends from the sewing workshop supported her financially while she was recovering. Then she managed to work until the birth and finally the child was born. True, it was a girl. Nicole asked Amanda to help choose a name, and they decided that she would be Maria, because it was an old, beautiful, and magical name. Raising a child alone, of course, was very difficult, but Nicole did not despair. She worked whenever she could find an opportunity in her new motherly schedule every day, and even when Maria turned four, she met a man named Martin. True, in Amanda's opinion, this was not the best match again. Ten years older, without his own place to live. He came from a village where the whole family drank. But Nicole said that he was a real man, worked as a laborer, and the child needed a father. And then, when it seemed that life was more or less coming together, there was nothing to complain about, that's when the disease unexpectedly returned. At first, it was just back pain, and Nicole thought she was just overworked at work. After all, she also cleaned the stairwells in the house where she lived. Then she began to lose feeling in her legs. The doctors said, what did you expect? You gave birth after such an injury, and you worked hard. In the last four years, Nicole's condition has been getting worse. Now she hardly ever gets out of bed. Amanda, of course, helped as much as she could, but she saw that her friend's life was bad, which was not a little contributed by her husband, because Martin had recently started drinking. At first, it was beer and it seemed like only after work. Then he switched to stronger drinks. Amanda even once scolded him. She sternly demanded that he think about his family. This isn't mine, Martin grimaced and hiccuped drunkenly, it's someone else's. He wanted to call the baby something strong, but he got scared. And then alcoholism, he raised his shaking finger firmly, that's also a disease, it's hereditary for me. But still, I'm the man of the house, so don't you meddle, why did you come here? Although, in my opinion, your stupid girl Maria is just wasting money. I'm not coming to you for money, Amanda replied. She was disgusted by this man. He was unworthy of her friend. In general, such a thing should not have happened to her bright, kind Nicole. By the way, Amanda really didn't take any money for preparing the little girl for school and all other additional lessons with her. She convinced Nicole to accept help, even though it was uncomfortable for her. Close the window, it's cold, Martin peered into the kitchen. There's no air to breathe in the apartment. You should at least mop the floor sometimes, everything sticks to your feet, Amanda replied. Mop the floor? What, are there no women in the house? Look at her, he pointed his finger towards Maria, who was sitting on a chair, curled up like a little animal, hoping to hide from the hunter's eyes. So, grab a rag and get going. In the village, at her age, everyone already knows how to do everything, and this one. And then the stepfather drunkenly spat on the floor again. Look at this, princess. You're learning, but it's all in vain, he waved his hand and went into the room. By the way, they divided the only room into two parts with a shelf, and the second half was supposed to be a children's room, but Maria slept in the kitchen. There was a small sofa there. Everything's fine, sweetheart. Don't pay attention, Amanda patted her student on the head, let's continue. So, what do we have here? The octopus swims quickly through the blue sea. And I don't know what the subject is here, Maria whispered, tears in her eyes. She was afraid of her stepfather. Amanda sighed and looked at the words under the picture below, where a sea creature, an octopus, was drawn. Yes, something was wrong with the learning process. But Amanda still remembered well that when her stepfather went to the village for a couple of days, the little girl made huge progress. Apparently, it was just difficult to study in the oppressive atmosphere at home. When the lesson was over, Amanda stopped by Nicole's for a minute to check on her, to see if she needed any help. Go already. 
go, Martin waved his hands, turning up the volume on the news. He loved watching them, and then he would start talking about how everything was wrong, not to his liking, in the world. He should get his own life in order, smartass, Amanda thought angrily and finally left the apartment. Amanda, she was called out when she was crossing the yard on her way home, wait, Amanda. Turning her face into a friendly expression with a smile, the girl turned around. Hello, Michael. The son of her mother's friend and the whole family's imposed fiancé. In general, Michael was a good guy. They had known each other for about 100 years. He worked as a construction foreman, had no bad habits, went to a boxing club, was focused on family, children. In a word, he was perfect. Even his face was cute. But to Amanda's taste, he was bland, predictable. Too calm. There were no butterflies in her stomach from him, as they say. No excitement, no thrill. They had already gone on a cute date to an Italian restaurant. And they even kissed once. And it was nothing special. But on the other hand, Amanda's mind understood well that family and marriage should not be built on fantasies and passions, but on mutual respect, trust, and the ability to compromise. Michael asked how she was. Amanda replied that she was fine, and he offered to walk her home. They slowed down and started talking about everything little by little. Michael shared his joy, his mother bought a second plot of land adjacent to her dacha. There was nothing on this plot yet, but landscaping was a profitable business. Amanda listened to his plans about what kind of house they would build there, how they would lay out the garden to have their own organic produce. And she was almost yawning. And then she almost choked on air, if that's possible, but it turned out it was possible, because Michael suddenly said. Marry me. Theoretically, Amanda assumed that a marriage proposal was not far off. But right now, she was in shock. She stopped and blinked rapidly. We can file the paperwork at the registry office tomorrow if you want, he smiled and took her hand. Michael's palm turned out to be hot and sweaty. The guy was terribly nervous. He had been in love with Amanda for a long time and could not believe that she was about to become his wife, but he had no doubt about it. My mom's cousin is married to the owner of the Jasmine restaurant. They agreed that we could arrange everything for the banquet at a discount. Oh, Amanda expressed her feelings with one sound, and Michael smiled broadly. I'm so happy. Wait, I. Amanda pulled her hand away. She didn't like feeling cornered, but that's exactly what was happening right now. She was blooming with a wild color. But I haven't agreed yet. Michael's expression changed before her eyes. The smile disappeared, his eyes became so sad. It was as if he had hurt a child. Well, I mean. She swallowed hard. She started fidgeting with her purse on her shoulder. She needed to move somehow right now, to do something, otherwise the excitement threatened to turn into a panic attack. I need to think. That's usually how it goes when someone proposes to you. Apparently, Michael had heard about this too, that women are supposed to be given time to think. Okay, then until tomorrow, right, he exhaled with relief. She nodded. Oh, I still need to go to the market. I'll help, he volunteered like a brave knight to accompany her, but Amanda waved her hands. No, I won't keep you. I usually spend a long time at the market. And then I have some women's things to do, I need to go to the cosmetics store. She was making up excuses on the fly. She barely managed to fend him off. She hurried off in the opposite direction from home. There she was. Now she needed to make a decision, but Amanda suddenly realized that she couldn't just say the coveted, yes, so easily, because, well, I don't love him, she admitted to herself, almost falling behind the coffee shop table. Three lattes and three eclairs, she threw at the approaching waitress, barely glancing at the menu. In Amanda's life, there had only been one serious romance with a fellow student, but they broke up without really getting close, because it turned out he was a hunter. Amanda couldn't imagine how she would deal with a husband bringing home game to be skinned in a full apartment, yuck. And then somehow her studies and her own life got busy, where it seemed there was no place for men. She understood her parents' concern. They wanted to see their daughter happy, to have grandchildren. 
But then Amanda suddenly realized clearly that this marriage, what if it's a mistake? What if it's not always like her grandmother told her about her marriage, that you just have to put up with it? Amanda bit into the eclair with its rich cream filling. Goodbye, diet, but she could afford it, life is like that. After that, other pastries were ordered. Amanda just couldn't stop. Finally, after washing it all down with a glass of milk, she asked for the bill. She rummaged in her purse for her wallet and found another note in it. She unfolded it and frowned. Maria's handwriting, written crookedly with mistakes, but what Amanda read horrified her. Apparently, afraid to speak openly, because the stepfather was always around the apartment, the tutor's visit and the little girl decided to entrust everything to paper. The fact that Amanda was shocked by the hastily made marriage proposal, made without any romance at all, was all pushed to the background because she had to urgently save her friend. Amanda returned home, helped her mother prepare dinner, had a lesson with another student remotely via web link, set the alarm for 7 a.m. Nicole was so happy yesterday, she said that Martin would leave home early because he wanted to quickly take the train to his hometown and return in the evening. Something happened with the sewage, he needed to help his parents. And now Amanda decided to take advantage of his absence for a serious conversation. Here, your daughter wrote this, she handed the note to her friend the next day. Maria came, opened it, went into the room where Nicole was lying, pulled up a chair to her bed, and sat down. What's this? Nicole squinted, reading, then widened her eyes and nodded her head. She was about to say something, but Amanda cut her off. Do you want to say that the child is making this up? No, I can understand that you want to save your family, but if this is true, then there's nothing to save here anymore. The helpless woman lying there trembled her lips, her eyes filled with tears, because the complaints the little girl told her aunt the tutor were true. Martin really did hit her mom, there really was nothing to eat at home because Martin spent his salary on himself first, mostly on expensive alcohol, because he said the cheap stuff ruined his liver. Nicole held on for a long time. She believed that this was just a difficult period in life, because she got sick, couldn't work, and all the household chores fell on her husband. And since there was no money for a caregiver, he had to take care of her. And this, of course, is not always clean. It's psychologically difficult for a man. But then one day, when she was reprimanded for not cooking porridge for Maria for breakfast and lunch, there was no hot dinner either, Martin painfully grabbed his wife's hand and shook her, shouted that he was a man and earned money, that he was tired of dealing with both of them. And then the husband seemed to make a cruel discovery for himself. He can behave like this, can vent his anger, irritation on his helpless wife, who after all won't go anywhere. But you can't do that, said Amanda, when her friend finished confessing how they really lived, you need to do something. You need to leave him. Leave him? And what's next? Will you be with me? I'm sorry, she added immediately, realizing how unfair it was to her friend, who was always there, always ready to help with something, but I'll be lost without him. If only I were healthy. By the way, how's it going with the funds? Amanda asked. It was her idea to post an ad in various charitable organizations to raise funds. Not very well, actually, Nicole replied. The amount needed was astronomical and not just for one-time treatment. A serious operation was required, as well as prolonged rehabilitation care. Martin, she suddenly decided to say everything that was wrong, Martin said that if I go to the hospital, he won't be with Maria, that he'll put her in an orphanage. He's my husband, he said he has the right, and Nicole burst into tears. Amanda also wanted to cry very much, but instead she told her friend. Don't scare the child with tears, please. Went to the kitchen, looked in the fridge, empty. Ran to the store, cooked chicken soup, fried cutlets, and also an apple and cinnamon charlotte. She was supposed to help her parents at home with wallpapering, but she called and said that she had urgently left for one lesson and didn't regret that she lied a little. After all, for a good cause. And if she had said it directly, they would have started grumbling. Amanda fed her friend, Maria, lunch and finally could continue with what she had to do. And the thing was that she showed Nicole only one part of the note, and tore off the bottom part of the sheet, because there Maria wrote something completely unimaginable. Amanda talked to her about it quietly after lunch. Maria, how do you know about the red-haired aunt? 
Victor said, a hooligan. Dad goes to their house. Victor says he sneaks around like a thief. The named Victor was indeed known in the neighboring yards as a reckless, ill-bred boy from a dysfunctional family, and his mother raised him alone. Amanda decided that maybe she wouldn't tell her friend anything about her husband's infidelity. First, she needed to make sure that these were not strange children's fantasies, not some kind of mistake. Amanda found Victor with difficulty. The boy climbed into the garages with his friends, and there they arranged something like a headquarters. She lured him out only after swearing that she was not a neighbor with claims about broken windows. And in general, that she was an acquaintance of Maria's family. What do you need? The teenager asked suspiciously. Amanda told him what she needed. Well, he comes in different ways. Mom is waiting for him again tonight. Probably by 10, as usual. Will you tell his wife everything? Of course, but Nicole is seriously ill, she can't worry, so we need to think about how to present everything. You adults always complicate everything. Come in the evening and you'll see everything for yourself. And he explained where to find the apartment. He said that if you go from one side of the house, there is a small porch and various bushes grow there. So you can literally peek into the window. Amanda just shook her head, a little spy. But the boy's idea seemed excellent to her. Amanda, where have you been all day? From the threshold of the native apartment, the mother rushed to the girl and made scary voices, Michael came with a cake, said you have something important to tell us. Amanda almost growled. Here's another trouble came. She hadn't even answered him anything yet, and he already came with a cake. It seems he was going to announce at the table that they would become spouses. Making again the most friendly face she could, Amanda peeked into the kitchen, where they were already gathering at the table. Hello? The mood plummeted to the depths of the Mariana Trench, because Michael came not alone, but with his mother. So things were really bad. Amanda looked at the clock. There was still a lot of time before the X hour, when she had to become a little spy. It was unrealistically strange to wander around the street for homebodies, and the weather would spoil, so she had to stay. Amanda changed clothes, washed her hands, sat down at the table, and turned on all her eloquence. She tried with all her might to lead the conversation into the thickets, far from weddings and the like, and it worked. Well, it worked. Then Michael suddenly caught her hand again and smiled so much that he almost melted like ice cream in the sun from his own happiness. Amanda felt a herd of panicking goosebumps on her back. Oh, I forgot my phone at Nicole's, she made up a lie on the go and prayed to someone unknown that no one would call the phone Melody, which all the family knew, right now. Amanda, Michael reached out for her, but she had already jumped up and fled to another room. She got ready to go out faster than ever and didn't even wait for the elevator, because it seemed like the drive was boiling in her blood. She ran down from the 10th floor, sometimes jumping over the steps. The rain stopped, but the wind was angry, with sharp, damp gusts. Amanda faced it, squinting. How good it was, and as for marriage, she would still think about it. After all, Michael is a good guy, she will stand by him like a rock. Maybe it is his love that will allow the marriage to last a lifetime, and he will never cheat or hurt. And the fact that she doesn't love him, maybe it's irrelevant for family life. Immersed in her conflicting thoughts, Amanda reached the right place. She took out her phone, turned on the video recording, and quietly climbed onto the porch. The window was indeed low, and the fact that the window was slightly open allowed her to hear what was being said in the room. There was a red-haired woman, Victor's mother and Martin. They were sitting at the table and drinking. They weren't drinking tea, they said. And what Amanda heard shocked her. It turned out that Martin hoped that Nicole would soon get worse, and then, citing the fact that he couldn't provide her with constant proper care himself, he planned to send her to some kind of boarding school. What a bastard. Amanda gritted her teeth. Martin also spoke rudely and contemptuously about his stepdaughter. He also planned to send her somewhere to a boarding school. Thus, Martin wanted to become the only tenant and become the owner of the apartment. Too bad, can't sell it. Or maybe I'll come up with something, he added at the end of his revelation to his drinking companion. What she heard, saw, and captured on camera was enough. 
Amanda quietly descended from the porch, got out of the bushes. It turned out to be a rose hip, mercilessly clinging with thorns to her new dress. What a day, the girl exclaimed, assessing the damage to her clothes, but then laughed nervously. Nicole would have her problems. That's where the real trouble is. And the main thing is that it's unclear what to do, how to help. Amanda returned home in the most upset feelings. You were on the phone for so long, weren't you? Her mother greeted her again at the door. It was quiet in the apartment. Michael left. Oh, daughter, what are you doing? And what's this? The mother gasped, seeing the condition of the clothes. Oh, just took a little walk in the park and got caught. Mom, don't start, okay? I'll talk to Michael myself. Why did he leave? He didn't want to leave, he wanted to wait for you. But Teresa said it was time for them to go. Oh, Amanda. Look, don't anger your future mother-in-law. Mom, I. Did he tell you? What did he say? So it's clear that you're getting married. To whom is it clear? To everyone. Haven't you realized it yet, Michael is your fiancé. Amanda rolled her eyes. Now her mother was talking like some grandmother. Educated, cultured. Okay, let's leave this conversation. After all, he wants to marry me, right? So, the decision is mine to make, Amanda replied not too politely, but from the bottom of her heart. The mother sighed heavily and shook her head, but didn't say anything more on the subject. At least go wash the dishes. It's your turn. Amanda agreed with this. Keeping busy with something while her mind was figuring out what to do next turned out to be very useful and calming for her nervous system. The next morning, Amanda wasn't ready to go and talk to her friend, she just couldn't find the right words, couldn't imagine how Nicole would live with this terrible truth. And what if she tells everything to Martin? How will he behave then? Amanda decided to take a little more time for herself to prepare, to prepare some kind of plan. She was getting ready for another student's lesson. In general, Amanda always crossed the road strictly on green and on the crosswalk. But this time, because the bus was delayed due to a breakdown on the route, the student's parents were the kind of people who would remember every little thing forever, Amanda was in a hurry and decided that if she carefully ignored the rules once, nothing would happen. And so, even though the light was red, she rushed across the road. She gained a minute there, two there, so she would be on time. But it didn't work out and it was all because of the thin, high heel of her new shoes, which got stuck in the grate literally half a meter from the sidewalk. Amanda, squealing, started shaking her leg and then turned around at the piercing sound of a car horn. She opened her eyes. A huge, black SUV was speeding straight towards her. She even had time to think that she could untie her shoes and free herself. And she even had time to think that there was no time for that. She closed her eyes, having one more thought that life should flash before her eyes at such a moment, but she had nonsense. And then the screech of brakes sounded. The SUV stopped, lightly bumping the girl with its blunt nose literally in the legs. A little more and the irreparable would have happened. Amanda cautiously opened her eyes. Do you want to die? And immediately met the gaze of the driver's eyes burning with rage. Oh, the girl said to herself when he leaned over her in a leather jacket. He had powerful, square jaws, a nose with a bump, unreal blue eyes, black hair, styled in a 60s-style fashion updo. Idiot, he barked in her face, blowing fresh, minty breath. Amanda felt a strange, tingling sensation down her spine from the proximity of this word, like a Viking giant. And then suddenly recognition came. She had seen the man who had broken her friend's life. Only once, but she remembered that face. And now it was right above her. Amanda acted on instinct. Her hand shot up and struck him sharply. The man recoiled, touched his cheek in surprise, then looked at his palm in amazement, as if an explanation for the action of the almost knocked-over stranger could have appeared there in ink. Scoundrel, she shouted at him, and wanted to rush at him with her fists and her purse slung over her shoulder, but forgot that she was stuck, groaned, and awkwardly began to fall. He caught her, held her, and hugged her so tightly that she forgot how to breathe. Miss, calm down. I'm sorry. 
Are you okay? Does something hurt? Yes, I'm guilty, but let's not fight. Why did you run on red? He stunned her with a stream of words, and she looked at him with all her eyes and didn't understand why, why it was so difficult to curse this monster on the spot. Let me go, she whispered, and he gently let her go, squatting down and deftly turning her leg towards her shoe so that the heel slipped out of the grate. To maintain her balance, she had to lean on the man's shoulder. I hate you, she said coldly, freezing him with her words when he straightened up. The man blinked, but then suddenly grinned maliciously too. For running on red yourself, you idiot? No, you, you ruined my friend's whole life. And Amanda, always so strong, who never backed down from a word, suddenly burst into tears. Bastard, you, she had a daughter. That's it, you're done. We'll get you for what you did, and then she expressed everything she thought. Hold on, stop, be quiet, he either ordered or asked, I didn't do anything to your Nicole, because my name is Lewis. And you're talking about Robin, it seems. That's my brother. What? How? What other brother? You are. Similar, right? Well, I'm not to blame that we're twins. What? Amanda couldn't believe it. The man returned to the car, approached, and again handed her his passport. Here, see, I have a different name. Amanda stood, frowning, trying to solve this puzzle. She remembered. Nicole did say that her boyfriend had a twin brother, only they didn't get along. I'm sorry, she sighed and hugged herself, I was mistaken. Yes, but it's been worse. The brother inherited. Meanwhile, the sky was covered with clouds. Somewhere there was a rumble in the heavens and the asphalt darkened under the first drops. So, let me wait a minute. I'll park properly and we'll talk about everything. There's a, he waved his hand at the characteristic sign, cafe over there. You'll tell me what happened there, because I didn't understand anything. Amanda agreed. They walked, sat down at a table, ordered a cup of fragrant drink, but Amanda didn't even touch her cappuccino. She was watching the man opposite her carefully. Definitely not him? Lewis rolled his eyes. How else can I prove it? No, I'm not Robin. Robin, he, he's dead. What? Nine years ago. Car accident. He went to China then and decided to race on the highway alone. And he crashed. In general, that's how it goes. He was quite something, of course, but a brother. So, what happened? You said he has a child, right? Nodding, Amanda finally took a sip of coffee and briefly told Lewis about how Nicole fell into the clutches of the vicious Robin, how she barely survived and, at the cost of her own health, decided to keep the child, and how she suffers now. Lewis listened attentively. Only occasionally did he ask brief questions. I didn't know anything about this, he replied, and for some reason Amanda believed him, I was in New York at the time and I was still studying. Then I was told that Robin got into some kind of trouble and urgently left the country. They said he abandoned everything. I returned two years after that. My father handed me the business. Wow, so it turns out all these years my niece was living here with me, and I didn't even know. So, he clapped his hand on the table, it turns out fate just brought us together, that's all. I was supposed to fly to Italy tomorrow, but it looks like I'll have to stay, the business can wait. And what you said, no. So, what are we going to do? I, I don't know, Amanda shrugged. I mean, how can you not know? Well, we can't just leave it like this. It's all very complicated. The girl already regretted her frankness, because this Lewis, although he made a pleasant first impression, still belonged to the same family. If even half of the rumors about them were true, then these were clearly not the people to be trusted. Amanda suddenly thought that maybe it wasn't in their interest at all for a woman with a child from such a person to live somewhere. Maybe they, that is, Lewis's relatives, would perceive this whole story hostily, because theoretically, if Nicole had a different character, she could have tried to get support for herself and the child from them, even if the child was born out of wedlock. In general, judging by what Amanda knew about the Anderson family, they didn't care about their personal reputation. 
But still, maybe it wasn't for nothing that her friend begged her to keep Maria's origin a secret. What's so complicated? Smirking, Louis leaned back in his chair, we'll take the child's mother to us and that's it. Where to us? Amanda asked cautiously. Well, home. They can't keep living without supervision with this Martin after all. Louis looked at his interlocutor in a strange way. Well, after all, she's family. No, what are you even talking about? Nicole is not an object to be taken and moved. She didn't want anyone to know about this at all. And especially the Andersons, she added quietly. Now Amanda began to feel that she had missed something in Lewis's perception. There was something dangerous about him, something that just made her instincts scream run. I need to talk to her, explain that I met you, say that you offer help. And that's how it will be, she finished decisively and stopped by a passing waiter with trays, asking for the bill. I'm treating you, Lewis said casually, and Amanda couldn't help but notice that he was literally examining her without any embarrassment. Thank you, but I'm not used to it, she proudly raised her chin and left the money for the coffee plus a tip for the waiter. Not in vain. The man seemed to be deliberately provoking her, licking his lips. Such a beautiful girl shouldn't. But here you are already crossing the line. Amanda nervously put on her jacket, got tangled in the sleeves, and muttered under her breath. That's it, I'll call. And she was about to leave. You forgot your phone, Louis stopped her lazily and mockingly. She wanted to slap him again, but she had to come back and actually exchange numbers. When the girl left, Louis looked thoughtfully out the window for a few minutes. Then he dialed the number of a person who had helped him out of the most difficult, and sometimes risky, situations more than once. Harvey, are you, are you free? You know, we have a problem. Amanda naturally was late for the lessons, and they had to be cancelled altogether. Caleb's parents told her that a tutor who was so careless couldn't teach anything useful, so they no longer needed Amanda's services. There were about four hours left until the next lesson to eat, take a nap, and go home. And in the last few days, Amanda had been chronically sleep-deprived. This would definitely not be enough considering the traffic jams on the roads. So, she had to spend this time in the shopping center. And then, when she had walked around it for the third time in a row, she went to the city library, where Amanda picked up the first book she found. It turned out to be a romance novel about a duke and an innocent maiden. She opened it for show, didn't want to read, and immersed herself in her thoughts. What did she know about these Andersons? She had deliberately not tried to find out anything about them. Well, here and there she caught rumors. It seems that they owned several enterprises in the region and throughout the country. They were rich. But the head of the family, Oscar, as they said, made his fortune in the 90s not by honest means. And he raised his son, at least Robin, abominably. Or, Amanda thought, evil in a person can initially exist regardless of upbringing. It was also vaguely known that the Andersons owned some business abroad. In Italy, that same Robin was involved in a dirty story, it seems, related to smuggling something there. Shrugging her shoulders, Amanda looked at her watch. Well, the time has come. I can go to the student. And forget about all this with the nuances of optional punctuation marks. The next day, seizing the moment when Martin was not at home, he went to work, Amanda went to her friend, finally decided to talk. Maria, naturally, to protect the children's ears from a serious topic, was seated to watch cartoons and, for reliability, was supplied with a bowl of cookies and a cup of cocoa. Nicole, as expected, took it all hard. It took Amanda a lot of effort to calm her friend down and ask her to hold on when it became known that the first love and the offender had died. Amanda went for a little lie, because she didn't believe it at all herself, and tried to convince her friend that if Robin had known that he had a daughter, he would surely have repented and realized what a terrible person he was. Amanda said all this to lead the conversation to the next topic, the help offered by Lewis. At first, Nicole desperately rejected her. She didn't need anything. Amanda had to be cruel and say everything straight. Well, what don't you need? To be healthy? To stop this, that's it, I can't take it anymore with you. 
You're Martin, he's not a husband. He's just as nasty a guy as Robin. No, don't say that, Nicole began, but Amanda just handed her the phone and showed her the secretly recorded conversation. Then she hugged tightly and looking into her eyes asked to hold on, because otherwise it was impossible, and it was also impossible to act recklessly, so in no case should you tell Martin that his evil plans are already known to everyone. It would be reasonable to hide to understand what benefit you can get from the Andersons. Yes, it was Robin who broke your life, but my opinion will not change. You need to accept help and you can. At least as compensation. Including moral. So it turned out, girlfriend, that you need to choose between two evils. Think about your daughter. You will stand up and no one forces you to be friends with these wolves, Amanda smiled cunningly, just take advantage of the help, and then say, goodbye. You will live independently with your daughter without any idiots. That's what they decided. Leaving her friend Amanda, taking advantage of the fact that it was a day off, went to the beauty salon. She had made an appointment a week ago. She decided to change her chestnut hair color and waist-length hair to a square with a fashionable coloring called California Highlighting, with which her hair seemed to be sunburned, but it looked beautiful. On the way, she called Louis. She said they needed to meet and talk. They agreed that he would come to the park. The weather was wonderful. They could talk right there. It suits you, that's the first thing Louis said when she arrived at the appointed time. I know, she replied and thought that she should not care what this guy thinks about her changed style. They walked along the park alley and Amanda naturally only partially conveyed the results of the conversation with her friend. Louis said it was not a problem. Find money and especially doctors here or abroad. You don't have to go far, Amanda said. He shrugged. And then the topic somehow strangely imperceptibly shifted to her own person. Amanda told him what she does for a living, what she does. She caught herself on the fact that this was already off-topic chatter, was embarrassed, got angry at Lewis because he started first. Amanda, hi, suddenly Michael's voice rang out. The groom chosen unanimously by the family, except for the bride, crept up unnoticed, literally emerged from behind the bushes. And now she looked bewildered. For some reason, he reminded Amanda of an owl, a good-natured one, a little clumsy. Who is this with you? A friend. His name is Louis. And this is Michael. He's my friend, she replied, but already looking away, because she couldn't bring herself to say that this, as everyone around her said, was her fiancé. You can't be reached, Michael gently reproached, my mom is asking about you. Hello to her. Amanda leaned down, picking a gray dandelion from the ground. Why did you cut your hair? It doesn't suit you. Mom always said that long hair is your decoration. You know what, these are my hair and I do what I want with them. And you, did you go out on the street, ask your mom for permission to go for a walk? She turned to him sarcastically, I'm tired of everything. Your mom has an opinion on everything. That's enough from me. She threw the dandelion on the ground and stomped on it. Louis, on the other hand, without any embarrassment, grinned, almost bared his teeth. Yeah, dude, run. And who are you anyway? Michael had never seen Amanda so irritated before, why are you even bothering my fiancé? Oh, the fiancé. Louis raised an eyebrow and suddenly caught Amanda's hand, brought it to his lips, and gallantly kissed it, but at the same time looked at her openly and predatorily. Accept my congratulations. Amanda was stunned at first, shivers ran down her spine, but then her cheeks flared up and she almost screamed. I haven't answered whether I agree yet. And leave me alone, both of you. She turned around and ran out of the park. Amanda, Michael tried to follow her, but Louis stopped him by the shoulder, catching him. She wants to be alone, isn't that clear to you? But you. Michael had never fought in his life, but now he really wanted to. He didn't like this friend of Amanda's, whom he had never seen with her before. He didn't like how he kissed the girl's hand, and how she looked at him. He was generally somehow uneasy and not himself. Stay away from her, he threw as menacingly as possible and also left the park. Lewis smiled. 
he wasn't going to do the last thing at all. Amanda was very interesting to him and now, not only as a friend of his big and sudden problem. However, he had no doubt that all problems were solvable, because so far, no matter what happened in the Anderson family in the end, one way or another with greater or lesser losses, and not at all from their side, but everything was resolved. Literally the next day, Lewis appeared at Nicole's house. Again, they decided together that for starters, so to speak, establishing contact, it would be most favorable if Martin was not around, and it turned out that he was at work. Lewis came with a bouquet of flowers, but after their meeting, Nicole asked Amanda to take them with her, because how could she explain their appearance to Martin? Nicole had wanted to cancel the meeting altogether the day before. To refuse everything at all and it was unclear how, but to deal with everything on her own, but the case turned out to be such that it became clear. Without the suddenly appeared support of Lewis, like an oasis before a wanderer in the desert, it was impossible. The point was that Martin came home drunk. He said he had been reprimanded at work and might even be fired. Nicole asked her husband to hold on with all his might, because the end of summer was coming soon and Maria had to go to school and nothing was collected or bought for her yet. But Martin angrily replied that he was the man of the family and would solve everything himself. He added that children nowadays are very spoiled, that you can still buy some notebooks, but all that form, a new backpack, it's pampering and nonsense. Then he added quietly, apparently thinking that his wife wouldn't hear, that he was tired of raising someone else's girl. But he didn't stop there. In the evening, Maria asked if he would buy yogurt for her. Martin shouted at the girl that he would put her on bread and water, and then she would know how to appreciate a piece and stop whining. That's why Nicole eagerly caught Lewis's words of promise. For starters, I arranged with the local clinic here in town, very good specialists. By the way, they work wonders. But if you don't mind, you can come for an examination as early as tomorrow. Oh, so fast? Nicole was amazed. Well, money opens different doors, Lewis shrugged. But I need to talk to Sylvia. She's our neighbor. She sometimes looks after Maria. Uh... Huh, Amanda nodded, I could watch her myself, but tomorrow I have two lessons. That's an option, of course, but I can offer a nanny service. No, no, that's too much, objected Nicole, and besides, it's a stranger. And the neighbor? Do you know her well? But it's still different, Nicole replied. She understood that in her situation, such unexpected care, thoughtfulness from Lewis, this was a real salvation, but on the other hand, it was uncomfortable for her to accept this help and somehow worrying. When Lewis left, Nicole talked to her friend again and secured her support in telling Martin all this news. By the way, they decided to tell him that it was a distant, very distant acquaintance who was helping. They postponed the conversation until the next morning, because then her husband would need to go to work again, and if they talked in the evening, he would have plenty of time to object, express his opinion, or even start a scandal. Fortunately, Martin just listened, didn't say anything, waved his hand at the useless, in his opinion, treatment plan. And went to work. There was another shortage of goods there, and the management was looking for the culprit. The examination took quite a while. Nicole thought she would have to wait several days for answers, but to her surprise, the chief doctor of the clinic immediately gave his prognosis that the restoration of the normal state of the body was possible provided that the treatment started soon. Don't worry about the operation, reassured the patient, we have everything to carry it out at the level of the best clinics in America and Europe. Now we need to conduct some additional tests and we can set a date. I think, considering everything, plus the rehabilitation period, by New Year you will be able to try to take your first step. Really? Nicole was amazed. Tears welled up in her eyes as she imagined being healthy. She would walk with her daughter, and then one day, as she dreamed, they would even go to the sea together and splash in the waves. But she immediately pulled herself together. The sea is far away. The main thing is just to get healthy. Amanda's thoughts in recent days were entirely and completely occupied by her friend's fate. There was almost no time for herself. However, this didn't particularly bother her. In the girl's life, everything had long been subject to the usual routine, teaching students, a little fitness, watching her favorite series, plus re-watching it. 
and also household chores. What personal life is there? Even if your relatives seem to have set themselves the goal of getting you married off as soon as possible. Dad, are men scarce on earth? Amanda asked carefully, without haste, while making another cottage cheese jam. On the day of their big jam-making session at the table, the family gathered, and it didn't go without Amanda's annoying topic. No, of course not. It's just that your mom and I think Michael would be a good husband for you. And does anyone care what I think at all? I'm not arguing, Michael is a great guy and could really be a good husband, just for someone else, I guess. Why? What don't you like about him? Amanda's mother supported her father. Well, there's just no spark, the girl honestly replied. Oh, dear, her grandmother shook her head, a spark can be dangerous. It's like a fire. Amanda froze, noticing that she had stained her dress with flour. I'm tired of making dumplings and talking about fiancés. That's it, I've had enough of semi-finished products, she said, getting up and shaking her hands, I'm going to Nicole's. Oh, why bother with her? She's a grown married woman, her mother protested. Age and marital status are no obstacle to friendship, Amanda shouted from the bathroom, went to wash her hands, and that was that. But in reality, Amanda didn't go to her friend's house, but to a completely different address. And she decided to do this without warning, because she wanted to personally see and find out where her friend would theoretically have to live. There was no doubt that it was better to move out of the house where the husband aggressively cheated on his wife and was up to no good. Let me in. I'm here to see Lewis Anderson. Tell him Amanda is here, she said briskly into the intercom outside the mansion, located in a picturesque, environmentally friendly area of the city. You guessed right. The gate was opened by a guard who would have been perfect for playing a bulldog in a play, because he was very solid and had a stern expression on his face. After greeting the unexpected guest, the guard led her to the house. Amanda approvingly noted the small, well-kept garden outside and the stylish, but not insanely golden-like in some rich people's homes, interior. Hello, suddenly a melodious girlish voice sounded, and a pretty blonde girl in a tight red mini dress appeared in the hallway to Amanda and the guard. Hello, Amanda replied and thought to herself, who is this? Lewis had said something about his father's second wife being the same age as him. The well-groomed beauty didn't look like a servant either, so there was only one option, she was Lewis's friend. Well, that was to be expected. So you're Amanda. Lewis talks so much about you and about this Nicole. It's great that you came, and I was already thinking of coming to you myself, the blonde girl chattered. Why would you come to us? To meet my relative and her best friend, the blonde girl replied too naively for Lewis's friend, oh, I didn't introduce myself. My name is Isabella. Pierce, she turned to the guard, you're free. And she turned back to the guest. Let's go, Lewis is in the backyard. Amanda didn't like the blonde girl. Too bright. And what a wonderful name, Isabella. She also thought that she had gone to make dumplings and now it was somehow uncomfortable in her knitted sweater with a stretched collar. And all this was in vain. And why should she, an honest person, be embarrassed in the company of these people? She didn't have time to think it through, because, after passing through several rooms, she came out into the backyard and found herself in a small cozy garden in the center of which stood a horse of a fantastic golden color in a small paddock. Next to him, on his knees, was Lewis. He was examining the horse's leg and speaking to it affectionately. I didn't think these giants could be so gentle. He was bandaging the horse's leg. That's it. It won't hurt anymore. You'll be a good boy. Stand still. Almost done. Hey, animal doctor, the blonde girl in red called out to him and waved her hand, there are people here to see you. Lewis got up. He looked impressive. Amanda saw him without a jacket for the first time. Due to the warm weather, the man was wearing a simple black t-shirt that accentuated all the muscles of his body, torso, and arms with his jeans. Hi, he smiled at Amanda and said, didn't expect you, but glad. What's up? 
Well, I was thinking about the proposal to change the place of residence and wanted to see for myself what you can offer my friend, she replied importantly, and it even seemed funny to herself. So, there were a dozen more options to choose from. That's wonderful, Isabella clapped her hands, don't doubt it, my brother will be able to take care of your friend. And me too. In general, it's all terrible, she sighed, we have to keep living. Nicole and her daughter certainly deserve the best. Brother? Amanda gasped, you're his sister? Well, yes. What did you think? He just didn't mention that he has a sister. Well, that's all there is to it. My brother is quite a character and scares off the female sex. So, be careful. Well, I'll go. I have things to do, she winked at Amanda. So, you're not only a millionaire, businessman, athlete, but also deal with horses? Amanda asked, looking around everything except the man sprinkled with definitions. I'm not an athlete, just good genetics, Lewis replied and pulled an apple out of his jeans pocket, breaking it in half. He handed one part to the girl. You can treat the storm. She loves it. Well, if you say so. Taking the juicy fruit, she carefully held it out in her palm and gasped when the horse picked up the treat with its soft velvety lips. What happened to her? She ran into a bolt, it was sticking out of the ground. It's my fault. I should have been more careful where I was leading her. But now everything is fine. She's an old lady already, but as you can see, she's well preserved. My first and only horse. He slowly stroked the animal's neck. Our father told us once that there were two gifts for New Year's, a horse and Maria's. Robin naturally chose the second one, and I got her. And then their fingers met on the silky skin and it felt like a tiny lightning bolt struck. Amanda withdrew her hand and looked embarrassedly at her shoe tips. I actually came to talk about Nicole. Since you're offering your patronage, it would be silly to refuse it. Don't think that Nicole is a fool. It's just that everything that has happened in recent years has had a very strong impact on her. And I don't want, I can't allow her to make the wrong decision with my help. I understand. So, you're kind of her representative. Well, Mr. Representative, ask your questions and make your conditions. Let's negotiate. This was said easily, even jokingly, but Amanda understood that the conversation was going to be serious. Over the years, Nicole had come to terms with her situation, and if there were certain stages in nature that, according to the theories of many psychologists, a person who finds themselves in a difficult and nightmarish life situation should go through, she had jumped over them in an instant, quickly finding herself in acceptance. However, it wasn't the kind of acceptance where the world seemed black and white and you didn't care about anything or anyone. Nicole simply decided to let go of the past, not allowing it to torment her anymore, and to focus on the one and truly important thing, her child. It was her daughter who was the incentive to regain her health, to work more. It was Maria who didn't let her get depressed. True, now she also had to admit that, driven by the best motives, Nicole had made quite a few mistakes, the main one of which was her marriage to Martin. Now, after a considerable amount of time had passed, she realized that she had married him out of desperation, because it seemed like, who else would need her, an orphan without a higher education, with a child in her arms, and sick to boot. So she took Martin as her savior. And she let all his shortcomings, from stinginess to neglectful, sometimes even contemptuous rudeness towards herself, pass by. She thought, since everything wasn't very bad, it would do. It couldn't get any worse. But it turned out that it could. And now Natalia was simply afraid for her daughter. But also a little for herself. However, this fear only gripped her in the past days. And now, when a person, an external point of support, a copy of the one who destroyed her life in character and intentions, appeared in her life, it seemed like his complete opposite. Now the fear had receded, replaced by hope that there was still justice in the world. No, Nicole wasn't expecting any fantastic gifts from fate for what she had suffered in the past, but she was timidly hoping that everything would just work out so that she could be a healthy mother for her daughter. That they could live independently. Peace in the world.
Nicole thought that maybe the white streak had begun when Amanda came to her and told her that she had been to the Andersons' house, talked to Louis about everything. And she also met his sister and it seems that she is a very nice girl. Nicole, remembering how Martin had been arguing again in the morning, complaining that he would have to work all his life to pay for his wife's medical needs, agreed that it was better for her to move out. So, we're packing our things. I'll call Louis right now. Let him come and take them. So, Martin is at work until evening, right? Amanda was a little embarrassed that they weren't moving out, but rather running away. But it was the only option, especially since they didn't want any scandals. Overall, how reasonable was Martin? She didn't want to find out in practice. Where are we going? Asked Maria, excitedly watching Aunt Amanda hurriedly pack all her little belongings into a travel bag. The girl stood nearby, hugging a plush white teddy bear with a pink bow around its neck. It was a gift from Louis. We're going to visit mommy's friends, Amanda explained, which was actually true. And stepdad, he's not coming with us. The girl asked cautiously, and her eyes simply lit up when she found out he wasn't. There are horses there, Amanda said, Louis will probably let you ride one. And there's even a garden with flowers. But how will I go to school? I only know how to cross the street every other block, the girl suddenly remembered about her upcoming studies. Maybe they'll drive you there by car or you'll just go to another school. We'll definitely figure something out. So, do you really need all these toys? Amanda asked with a doomed sadness, looking at the shelves cluttered with all sorts of things. And there was a pile of toys in the toy box. Very much. And I need books, and a lamp, she pointed to the nightlight shaped like a moon. Yes, I understand everything with you, Amanda sighed and shook her head, and went to look for some boxes to pack everything properly. Martin had no intuition, it just so happened that he left work earlier that day. Where are you going? He immediately understood that his wife was not going to the clinic with their daughter and with so many things. But what angered Martin the most was that Nicole was holding some stranger in her arms, and he didn't care that his wife was singing about acquaintances. Martin, I need treatment. It was uncomfortable to speak in this position. Nicole thought that her crutches had already been removed to the salon. Actually, Louis was going to arrange it there. But Martin appeared at the wrong time. It would have been better to just explain everything to him over the phone. I'll stay with friends for a while. It will be better. I won't cause you any trouble there. Look at her. So I'm working, and she's up to something. She's already tangled up with him, right? Calm down, your wife is in good hands, said Louis and sent Martin a smile that made him even more angry, but also hinted with his whole appearance that it was better not to interfere, it was dangerous. There were several neighbors nearby, and they naturally became interested in what was happening. Let's calm down, Amanda stood between her friend and her husband, Nicole is an adult and can decide for herself where to live. Where is the child going? I won't let my daughter go, Martin was clinging to the possibilities of control. Did you adopt her? Louis suddenly asked. Who are you anyway? Martin was so outraged that he almost choked. I'm asking again, did you adopt the girl? No, but. That's why you shouldn't interfere. Your voice is clearly not decisive, with a smirk, Louis easily and gently, like a porcelain vase, arranged Nicole in the car salon, especially after what you did to your wife's apartment, got yourself a mistress on a lower floor, Louis added and said nothing more, sitting in the driver's seat. Amanda and Maria were already in the car, the first in the front passenger seat, the second next to her mother in the back. The neighbors heard everything, and now they all looked at Martin, and he, who had been so brave before, suddenly felt more humiliated and insulted than ever. You didn't have to say that, Amanda said. You have to put them in their place, otherwise they get too bold, Louis replied. But he's my husband, said Nicole, oh, I need to call him urgently. What have you done to me, she continued indignantly, this is, excuse me, none of your business. Maria belongs to our family. To the Andersons. So her family and especially everything that happens to her mother is our business, Louis said calmly, you made the right decision by agreeing to move. 
Your husband, I admit that this person may have positive qualities, but I admit that this is only out of respect for you. But he is clearly not the best company right now, when you need to get back on your feet as soon as possible. Upon arrival at the mansion, Louis allowed Nicole to take literally a couple of steps on her own, but then, seeing how difficult it was for her, he said that she needed to conserve her strength and picked her up again. Amanda followed, Maria was next to her. Isabella met the arrivals not just like that. In the hallway, she hung a bright poster, welcome home, and threw confetti into the air. Amanda thought it was too much, but Nicole, which rarely happened to her, smiled, and in general, the meeting with Louis's sister was clear that she was pleased. The luggage from the car was immediately taken by one person. Thomas, who was introduced as some kind of butler and a person to whom you can turn with any question. It also turned out that there was a scary maid Frida in the house, two younger ones, Erica and Viola. Three rooms were prepared for Nicole, one bedroom for her, the second for Maria. And another large room like a hall and they were all adjacent. If you need anything, just say so. The servants have been warned that you are our queen, Louis smiled when he put Nicole on the couch in the living room. Thank you, she replied shyly, I'll try not to cause too much trouble. Trouble? Since when has care been called that? Maybe let's switch to you, and having received consent, he continued, I just want to make your stay and Maria's too, as comfortable as possible. And my father agrees with me completely. Amanda, does Uncle Louis have a wife? Maria asked unexpectedly when Amanda led the girl out of the living room to show her her room. Here, by the way, there was something to be surprised about. Everything was decorated in white, sky blue, and pink tones. The crib was not simple, but in the form of a carriage with golden wheels, with a transparent canopy and funny plush unicorns at the bottom. Maria, when she saw this splendor, even squealed with surprise. She lost her speech. And then she asked this strange question. Well, it seems not. Why do you ask, little one? Just because, the girl replied and ran to look at the room further. In general, Louis could, of course, be praised for preparing so well for the arrival of the little girl. But on the other hand, it was too much. They probably spent a fortune, all because of the sudden surge of family feelings for the suddenly acquired relatives. Amanda found this strange. Not that she didn't believe in human kindness, but it was all alarming. Finally, when she helped her friend settle in her new place and asked her in detail about everything related to the treatment planned for the near future, Amanda was able to leave the Anderson house to return to her own. She had a lot of things to do, classes with students, and she also needed to figure out something with Michael. The phone was just ringing off the hook with his phone calls. Waking up the next morning, Nicole didn't immediately understand where she was. And when she remembered, she lay for a few minutes just watching as a sunbeam on the wall froze and accepted a new, amazingly prosperous reality. It was hard to believe that she was now given the opportunity to live in comfort, to receive care. Lewis provided the opportunity to choose from several professional caregivers. The company that would be most suitable for Nicole. Oh, how difficult this choice was. And in general, it was somehow shy to use everything that this man was ready to give but you couldn't say the same about Maria. The daughter was delighted with her new life. She liked that Louis really let her ride the horse. Naturally, he led the mare by the reins. She liked the room where she felt like a little princess. And the fact that for breakfast you could get pancakes, or soft waffles with cream, or cheesecakes. You'll spoil her for me, Nicole shook her head. They were sitting in the garden with Louis. He suggested having tea on such a warm, bright day outdoors. On the table, besides everything for tea, there were also papers from the clinic. It was necessary to familiarize oneself with the proposed treatment package. It seems we agreed to a you, Louis smiled and looked so attentively, intently at the young woman that she was embarrassed. Yes, of course. You'll spoil her for me. It's the least I can do. But you don't have to. You're wrong. You know, I just believe in fate, in the fact that many things in our lives happen not by chance. And so far, it hasn't let me down, Nicole. Unexpectedly, so much so that she gasped. He took her hand. 
Yes, he had already touched her when he carried her in his arms. But now it was different. I'll do everything to earn your trust and forgiveness for what my brother did. You're not responsible for him, she opened her eyes wide and was amazed at how strangely her own heart stopped for a moment. Such a wonderful feeling that hadn't been there for a long time. It had never been with Martin and she wanted it to happen again. But it scared her. I'm glad you can see a completely different person in me. And yet we are a family. I want to be there when you take your first steps, when you get healthy. Nicole smiled and turned away. She pretended to be looking at a late bee gathering nectar from a purple rose. The next few weeks merged into one unbearably long time because despite all the favorable forecasts of the doctors, the uncertainty tormented her. Nicole, although she wanted more than anything to become healthy, was very tired of the examinations, the complex terms that were thrown at her. She was also worried about her daughter, how she would handle these changes, whether she would be worse off in the new home. No, it was impossible to complain about how they were treated. It seemed that their arrival, that Louis, his sister, and the servants, it was strange to have servants at all. It seemed that they took it naturally, as if it should be so. But still, now Maria was out of her usual environment and couldn't even play with her old friends from the yard. And of course, Nicole thought about what it would be like when all this was over. After all, it was impossible for fate to smile like that, and that's it. So, it will be necessary, probably, to recover like this, to return to the usual life. She will have to divorce Martin. And, there was no doubt about it, it will be long and hard. As for Louis's sister Isabella, she seemed just wonderful. And how embarrassing it was to admit it, how much it cramped Amanda, but Nicole became friends with Isabella. They became close. Especially since Nicole was delighted with what Isabella was doing. In general, Dad wanted me to become a lawyer, not a fashion designer, the girl shared. On this overcast day, Nicole was in her room, which, due to the prevailing creative mess, more resembled a creative studio. But that's what it was in essence. Isabella was circling around the mannequin with a piece of fabric, figuring out how to drape the fabric on the dress more skillfully. Nicole sat nearby in a rolling chair, which she didn't have to get used to for long. But I'm stubborn. I said I'd run away from home if it wasn't my way, the girl continued. Yes, that's brave, Nicole shook her head. She personally couldn't imagine how you could communicate with your relatives at all if you generally had good relations with them. She always dreamed of a family. Nicole was going through sketches. It turns out that in six months, Isabella, having received the appropriate education, was supposed to have a show in Rome. For now, of course, not as part of the World Fashion Week, but it was already a start. I also wanted to become a designer. Really? Wow. Tell me, why didn't you? I had to earn a living, Nicole shrugged and immediately realized how ugly it sounded with a hint that someone was rich, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to, I just didn't have the opportunity. Everything is fine. But now it might be time to fulfill a dream. What do you mean? Nicole didn't understand, looking at several more sketches. Here they were ruthlessly crossed out and, it seemed, were variations of what the young designer was already trying to create in real life, not on paper. Well, you can start learning now, she replied so simply, as if the opportunity for this was already ready, just reach out your hand, understand, you probably have talent. It's like missing a grain of happiness in life if you don't do what you like. Oh, Isabella. She spoke beautifully, but naturally was cosmically far from the truth, because many, many people are forced to do what they don't like just to earn a living for themselves and their loved ones. Here, by the way, let's do it right now, the girl smiled and clapped her hands at her idea. Can we? She clarified with Nicole, and when she nodded in response, she drove her closer to the mannequin. I can't figure out what to do here and she pointed her finger at the waistline of the mannequin and below the thigh line. There should be drapery here, but I've already tried thousands of options, everything is not right. Here, take this. She handed Nicole pins with pearl heads. At first, she wanted to refuse, what does she understand about it? But then she bit her lip and thought. Resolutely got to work. Why not try? Well, for the sake of fun. 
Isabella didn't interfere in the process, silently watching. Done, said Nicole finally, and as you can see, it turned out. She wanted to say that it turned out horribly. What else can you expect from an amateur? But then Isabella showered her with compliments, that it's original, fresh, airy, and at the same time the lines, as the fabric lay, turned out strict, perfectly conveying the essence of the dress's mood. Isabella took a picture of the dress, walked around it, taking a video. Done. This dress is flying to Rome. What? What do you mean flying to Rome? Nicole blinked in confusion. I send it to my teacher, the girl shrugged and named the name of a very famous designer. What? That's what I did. Exactly. I asked him to answer whether my friend has talent or she should look for another calling in life. But, but. Nicole didn't understand how this was even possible. What Isabella was doing. By the way, the fact that you studied as a sewing designer is very good, because you understand the process of creating clothes from the inside. Nicole hadn't thought about it in that way. She just shook her head. They talked not only about fashion, but also about the near future. Nicole noticed that her new friend had a very unusual beautiful name. And she replied that her mother, the second wife of Luis's father, whom he took when the first died of cancer, was from Italy. That's where the name came from. And then it turned out that the day when Nicole was to have surgery came very quickly. The young woman, of course, was worried and, falling asleep under anesthesia, was more sure that she was hopeless than in the words of the doctors. But when she woke up, it turned out that the intervention was successful. And then in the following days it became clear that everything was even better than planned by the doctors initially. Nicole was on the mend. Of course, there was still a long process of rehabilitation ahead, but the main thing had already happened. Martin, by the way, almost didn't communicate with his wife during all this time. He and Natalia talked literally a couple of times, like, how are you, how's your health? He didn't ask about Maria. He was only interested in how much they had spent on the light. It turned out that he was perfectly fine living away from his wife, and as Amanda reported, he didn't even feel sad. Unfortunately, he is becoming more and more openly communicating with that redhead from the first floor. Nicole, finding out about this, no longer felt anything. In the sense that she realized that the marriage with Martin was built on a desperate desire to have a reliable caring person nearby. Nothing worked out as fate showed. There was definitely never any love. She just didn't have the courage to admit it earlier, because she didn't see any alternatives to living alone. But now everything was changing and Nicole felt more and more free. Amanda lived as usual during the time Nicole moved into the Andersons' house. Teaching her students, her little joys. Michael, fortunately, seemed to understand that marriage was no joke and that it took a lot of time to make such a decision, but he expressed his dissatisfaction once, repeating his mother's words about how youth passes and that it's better to think about starting a family earlier. Are you serious? Amanda twisted her temple with her finger, rushing a girl for an answer by hinting that the girl is getting older. You know, dear, after that, I'll think a hundred times that your candidacy with your mother as a bonus is not the best option. Michael blushed like a lobster. He apologized and even brought a bouquet of yellow roses. Yellow roses for parting. Have you heard of that? Amanda grumbled, but she took the bouquet. Michael was really upset. Okay, okay. I've known you for too long. Since the sandbox, to be more precise. Let's agree, if you really expect something serious, then just give me time. Don't rush, don't pull my soul out. And then even the friendship we've had for these years will, excuse me, start to disappear. Michael agreed. He was generally agreeing to everything now. But he also firmly decided, he wouldn't back down, because the day before, when he brought the flowers himself, he went to visit Amanda and in the girls' room the door was not very open, he noticed a bouquet of flowers on the table. Something lush, like orchids. Michael didn't understand this and it became suspicious, because there were no holidays in the beloved's house. So someone gave them to her. But who? Could it be the rich man who took care of his friend? 
Michael wasn't afraid to lose, because what could such a guy mean against him, a man whom Amanda has known since childhood? But it was still unpleasant. He wanted Amanda to wear a wedding ring already, like a married woman, and to behave accordingly. Amanda herself was busy with something more important, in her opinion, than thinking about whether it was time to get married. First of all, she was keeping an eye on her friend. It seemed to her that Nicole could become a victim of something she herself couldn't quite understand. But it turned out that the Andersons' interest in her was not so simple. All this care. And besides, Amanda was a little jealous of Nicole's relationship with Isabella. Until now, essentially, only she, Amanda, had been close friends with Nicole, and the appearance of a new character in their small group was troubling. And she didn't want Nicole to fall under any bad influence. One day, Amanda was in a hurry to her classes. To that very student, by the way, whose parents had rejected her due to her lateness, but then changed their minds. Amanda was triumphant. After all, she turned out to be the best. She hurried through the noisy city, thinking that she definitely needed to stop by Nicole's place to check on her recovery after the surgery. And suddenly, passing by the summer veranda, almost everything in the city was already closed, but this one remained, hidden by a canvas of coffee color instead of walls, she heard a familiar voice. Louis was talking to someone, and Nicole's name was mentioned. The girl stopped on the side of the building that adjoined the summer veranda. There were almost no passers-by, but judging by the sounds, the speakers were sitting here at the nearest table. Are the documents ready? Don't worry, I'll send you a sample contract tomorrow. What do our people say? Well, the situation is not easy, but I think we need to take control. The main thing. From what she heard next, it became clear that Lewis had met with his lawyer and they were talking about the fact that it turns out that Maria is not just Robin Anderson's daughter, but also his heir by law, since Robin inherited a considerable share of the family business from his father. Apparently, they were talking about very large sums of money. But the real shock was something else. It turned out that Lewis was worried that Nicole, as a representative of his daughter, could take over this very business. He was not going to allow this. And his plan was such that Amanda was enraged and finally, completely, stopped respecting this person. A real monster in the guise of a man, whom she already, oh, how stupid. Here's the fool. This person was already starting to appeal to her, and the flowers he sent made her heart tremble. Hearing enough and fearing that she would be discovered here. The exit from the summer veranda was literally a meter away from where Amanda was hiding, and she decided to leave. And she realized, by the way, that she was late again. She sighed, stopped, dialed the phone number of the student's parents, and, not wanting to listen to compliments, she herself said that she would not come. Circumstances force her. They promised to leave her a negative review on all resources. Amanda almost threw the phone to the ground. By the way, Lewis was also to blame for this. He distracted her from her work with his conspiracy. How she hated him at that moment. But she pulled herself together. She needed to talk to Nicole as soon as possible. However, it turned out that she could only do this later, because in three hours there was a new lesson and Amanda couldn't afford to lose this student at all. And then her mom called. Amanda's grandmother felt unwell with her heart. Not to the point of an emergency, but of course, the girl hurried home. So it turned out that she could only get to her friend the next day and, of course, she didn't want to talk about everything over the phone. Amanda, I was about to call you myself and demand that you come. Her friend was in a surprisingly good mood. And for some reason, it seemed to Amanda that it was not only because she was recovering. Today is such an amazing day. Can you imagine, Maria said she likes math. Lewis suggested a very good tutor. It turns out that Maria has abilities, she just needed a different approach. Amanda agreed with this until she started teaching the girl Russian. She never got above a C, apparently, Maria belonged to those kids who need a special approach to understand difficult topics, and then they do better. The girl would definitely be happy about the success of her young student, but a serious conversation on a completely different topic was ahead, after which, perhaps. 
Oh, only now that the emotions have subsided, Amanda thought that by telling everything, Nicole could cross out her all such well-being in the present, but it was also impossible to remain silent about it, because then she would come out, she would be in great danger. And Maria too. Amanda had already breathed in, taken a deep breath, to start, to immediately rush into the very hell, but they were unexpectedly interrupted. Isabella burst into the room like a positive hurricane. Dad's here. Surprise. He just called, he's already coming. Hooray, shining with a smile, she jumped to Nicole, took her hand. You need to change urgently, nodded, hinting at the home dress with a funny mouse pattern. Amanda was a little shocked. The situation was getting more complicated. It was turning into a catastrophe right before her eyes. She managed to find out that Oscar Anderson was, in fact, the real owner of the entire family business empire. It was he, not Lewis, who made the key decisions. So Amanda realized that she had to act decisively. Where are you going? Nicole, who was rushing to the door, called out to her. I need to find out something urgent from Lewis, she said on the go, what came to her mind. Now she could only hope that these rich people, who seemed to have no conscience or decency left, would listen to her. If they didn't, Amanda hadn't yet decided what to do in that case, but she had no doubt that she wouldn't let her friend be hurt. After all, the operation had already been done and successfully, so Nicole could depend less on this family if she wasn't good with them. Where's Lewis? She caught the maid in the corridor. He's in the office, but Oscar Anderson ordered that no one. Ignoring her, Amanda rushed further into the office, flew into it without knocking, without an invitation. How dare you, you little puppy! The tall gray-haired man slapped Lewis, who was standing in front of him, with a sharp movement. Amanda froze, barely crossing the threshold. Boops. It immediately became clear, the scene was clearly not for strangers' eyes. The men turned to her synchronously. The one who was apparently Oscar, the head of the family, looked displeased that the conversation with his erring son had been interrupted. Lewis was embarrassed and it was clear that he was very uncomfortable to appear in such a light. I said not to disturb. Who are you? The man said authoritatively. Amanda. At first, the girl wanted to apologize and leave, but she realized that this man, he immediately sensed weakness. This means that she will have to deal with him, and how scary it is, as if a wolf has taken on a human guise and is now looking into her soul, pondering, to attack, or to wait. I'm Nicole's friend, she clarified and stepped forward boldly. I know everything, I know what you're planning. Is that so? The old man's eyebrow arched, he smirked. How interesting. Interesting? Amanda flared up, who had just stopped being afraid. And she said everything she thought about Lewis's sinister plan. And then something began to dawn on her. She suddenly read emotions, the anger of Lewis's father, Lewis's confusion and vulnerability. And even thought, if. You, she began, but the gray-haired man gestured for silence. Fortunately, the lawyers work for me, not for him. And last night, I was informed of an interesting piece of news, that my own son, it turns out, decided to follow in his brother's footsteps. Lewis, tell me, did you think I wouldn't find out anything at all? Seriously? How wouldn't I find out that you're understating the profits? Yes, your accounts, by the way, are under lock and key. What? Father, I'll explain. Well, try, but later. And for now, I must apologize to this lovely girl. And he turned to Amanda again. I'm sorry things got delayed. I should have dropped everything and come as soon as I found out I had a granddaughter. Maybe we should sit down. We need to talk seriously about everything. Amanda was beginning to feel that everything that was happening was unreal. That she had become the heroine of some movie, a drama mixed with a thriller. The answers to the questions were finally obtained. Amanda's panic and fear for her friend were justified. It turned out that Lewis planned nothing less than to make Nicole fall in love with him and marry her. And also to adopt Maria. This way, he would gain full control over the little girl, the heiress of his brother's estate. 
And moreover, Oscar Anderson practically stated in plain text that his son had no intention of treating Nicole well and carefully. It seems she was needed by him purely formally. Dad, but I wouldn't have, Lewis began, but his father looked at him in such a way that he stopped and fell silent. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have interrupted. You shouldn't even breathe now without my permission. I'm sure you would have turned that poor girl's life into hell. Do you think, after everything your brother did, this is like atoning for his sins? I'm afraid I was wrong. You're too much like him. So, the decision is made. I'll transfer the shares to Isabella. What? You can't. She refused to enter the family business? But she was always honest. Formally, she can be the holder of the package, the second largest after mine. I can't entrust it to you, really. Listen, all this is very important, but this is for you, Amanda tried to bring the attention back. So what about Nicole? You understand that now she can't. What are you talking about, girl? Formally, but for some reason it didn't sound rude or dismissive. Rather, Oscar addressed her confidentially and patronizingly. Do you really want your friend to go back to her old life, to a poor apartment, where that man is waiting for her? I don't believe in fate. I just know that the events of the past have led to me having a granddaughter now. And I'm not going to leave her to the mercy of fate. Yes, she's the heiress to a large estate. It just so happened that what Robin owned, as his father, passed to me. But Maria has the right to it. And always has. I intend to do everything to ensure that the girl takes advantage of all the opportunities that have opened up to her. She's not just your friend's daughter, she's my own flesh and blood. But, Amanda began, but fell silent under the strange gaze of the brown eyes. Lewis's plan should not be known to anyone. Nicole doesn't need to know this. Let her life be calmer after everything, agreed? I'll personally inform her of the situation. I'll personally make sure that now no one and nothing threatens her. And then Amanda asked the question that had been bothering her since she found out that Lewis was planning to mercenarily marry her best friend. Why did you send me flowers? Why did you act as if you liked me? Amanda. Listen, I know I acted selfishly, despicably. Dad, can we talk alone? No, talk here. I've had enough of your secrets. And besides, I'm really interested in hearing about your adventures, you know. Lewis's father clearly enjoyed his son's helpless submission, who depended on him for everything. He was raised in such a way that even though rebellion occurred, it was quickly suppressed. Amanda even felt a little sorry for Lewis. He seemed so brutal, fair, but not enough to feel any disgust or desire to get away from his company. Yes, I thought that marriage to Natalie would be a formality. She would have had a status in society. She wouldn't have needed anything. But with you. You wanted to make me a mistress? I've never met such men. You're just. She fell silent because Lewis's father was there. I'm very sorry that I allowed myself to be weak and thought it was sincere. Well, you know, time goes by. Oscar got up from his chair. I think I need to meet with Nicole and my granddaughter. Amanda was overwhelmed with emotions, but she found the strength to control them. She understood that her best friend was essentially at a crossroads right now. She could fall back because even if she regained her health, it wouldn't be easy for her. Or she could, indeed, take advantage of everything that Oscar Anderson offers. She could easily, simply divorce Martin. Anne Maria, the girl could get a good start in life. So Amanda vowed to herself. She would keep the dark secret. She also believed, just like that, her intuition worked, that Oscar Anderson was different. He was a complex, cruel man, living by the rules they had set, but he wouldn't harm Nicole and Maria. Nicole met Oscar. She immediately liked him. Later, she confided to Amanda that he seemed to her like the father figure she never had. Maria was initially wary of the serious uncle, but then agreed to call him grandfather. And then, when he gave her a wonderful plush giraffe and a box of raspberry chocolates, she even dared to ask if she could have a magical appearance of her father as well, now that she had a grandfather. 
and Oscar pondered. He could, of course, introduce Nicole to several worthy young men, naturally belonging to his circle. He promised himself to seriously consider this. Lewis, for two reasons, to keep him out of the way and for educational purposes, Oscar sent to the other end of the country to deal with the local problematic branch of one of the family business's offshoots. Isabella took the news of the transfer of the shares to her as expected by Oscar. She resisted with all her might, but then resigned herself to the fact that she couldn't escape from family affairs at all. However, she had a reason to rejoice. The designer to whom she sent a photo of Nicole's draped dress said that this girl definitely had talent. Nicole was pleasantly shocked by this news. But she was already drawn to the idea that maybe she could fulfill her dream and do what she liked in life. Especially since she didn't have to worry about earning money yet. Oscar assured her that his lawyers had already begun the process of transferring Robin's property to Maria. And, of course, everything would be under confide Amanda was happy that everything had worked out. It seemed to her that she had finally stepped off the carousel on which she had been spinning in worries. Let it be worries about her best friend, but it was someone else's life. While her own seemed to be put on pause. And now it was time to change everything. One evening, Amanda called Michael herself and said that they needed to meet. Despite the increasingly absorbing autumn world around them, the weather was good, warm. The couple walked slowly along the alley, rustling the leaves. Do you still want us to get married? She asked. Amanda, I. Michael stopped, caught her by the shoulders, and looked into her eyes in such a way that everything became clear. I guess I agree. Just don't be offended, but we've been friends for so many years, and it's not easy to move on to something new like this. But I'll try. Let's just not rush. Let's start with a beautiful romance. I also want us to learn to understand each other better, otherwise it will be not a family life, but a scandal. Does that suit you? Perhaps it was not quite right to talk about love and the future like this, but Amanda didn't know how else to put it. Michael smiled and nodded. I know I'm not perfect, but I'm glad you're giving me a chance, and I'll do everything to make us happy.